Hey guys, Bob here from Raw Strength and Muscle. And today we are going to discuss the three reasons why people cannot lose weight and keep it off. We are also going to discuss a way around that, a completely radical different diet method that you can use to start losing weight, keep losing weight until you're where you want to be, and then stay where you want to be instead of boomeranging up and getting fat again. All right. Now, first of all, the three reasons why people cannot lose weight and keep it off are Number one, you just cannot stay motivated long enough, okay? You start off on a diet, you're kind of motivated, and then it's like, screw this, I'm not really seeing any progress. And, you know, I just love to eat. You know, I'd ra I actually saw a guy post in Instagram at one time, it was like a comment, he's like, fuck that, I'd rather be fat. And that is the attitude that a lot of people have coming in, okay? You gotta get a person motivated, you gotta show him some results so he has a reason to stay on the diet. Okay, another thing is, let's say a guy stays motivated long enough to stay on a diet long enough to get really hungry, and at some point he just cannot handle the hunger anymore, and he doesn't eat like a cookie, you know, or a bagel, or have a cheat meal, or even a cheat day. He just like calls in from work, dude, I'm starving, this sucks, I'm gonna take the next 10 days of like just eating shit 24 seven, okay? And uh, you know, I'll call you when I can come back to work because this is more important. And then, you know, the guy gets fat as hell, fatter than he was before the diet and he has to start all over if he even bothers starting all over. And of course, the third reason why a person cannot get on a diet, stay on a diet and keep the weight off is because after the diet, they don't know how to eat to stay lean. You know, the guy ate in a way to be 150, 250, 300,000 pounds overweight, and the guy knows how to eat two Brussels sprouts a day and starve himself, but he doesn't know how to eat to maintain his new lean body weight. And we are going to just bust through all three barriers in this video with the new diet model that I'm going to explain to you. Okay, first of all, what most people do, okay, when they, you know, set a diet up for somebody is they cut calories a tiny little bit in the beginning, okay? And what that does is it kind of starts the, you know, the ball rolling and they lose a little bit of weight, okay? And then they stop losing weight. So they cut calories a little bit more and then they start losing weight a little bit more and then they start losing weight a little bit more and they cut calories a little bit more and they start losing weight a little bit more, okay? And they increase the caloric deficit, okay? They eat less and less and they burn more and more calories through exercise as they go on, okay? So you start in this little caloric deficit and then by the end of the diet, you're in a giant caloric deficit, okay? Now, that sucks for a couple reasons, okay? First of all, if you're in a massive ass caloric deficit, and somebody lost all their weight and you're like, hey, check it out, man, you're, we're done, go away, you know, have fun, whatever, you're skinny, okay? How is this guy in a giant ass caloric deficit that there's no way in hell he could maintain? How is this guy going to keep from getting fat? Because he has no idea how to like reverse diet. He has no idea how to figure out his, uh, you know, his calories for maintenance. He has no idea how to adjust his, you know, his, his like, you know, calculated calories for maintenance aren't going to be exact. So he has no idea to calculate them and then adjust them. And he has no idea what to do. All he knows is eat 10 pizzas a day, drink 10 cases of beer, eat 10 pints of, pints of ice cream a day. And that's probably where he's going to go to because you gave him no other choice. Okay. Another problem with starting with a small caloric deficit and going into a large caloric deficit is a lot of people are not going to be able to handle being more and more hungry as the diet goes on. You know, when the diet starts, you're like, ah, you know, whatever, I'm not eating everything, but it's okay. Then you're starting to get hungry and the scale stops moving. So you're hungrier than you were in the beginning of the diet. The diet sucks more than it did at the beginning. And now you're gonna cut the calories more and increase their exercise more. And then you're going to do it again and again and again. So the hungrier and the longer the person's on the diet, the less he's going to eat and the more life's going to suck for him, the worse the diet's going to be. Okay. And of course, another problem with starting off with a tiny caloric deficit and increasing it just so you lose like one pound a week, you know, oh, I am living in my little ivory tower and I am little Miss Princess who is a certified nutritionist. And I say you should only lose one pound of uh, fat a week and if not less. And the guy's like, all right, so I'm 50 pounds overweight, pound a week, 50 pounds. So I'm going to have to stay on this diet with no fuck ups, no cheat days for an entire year before I get to my goal body weight. Nah, I don't think it's that goddamn important. Okay. Or what about a guy who has 100 pounds to lose? 100 pounds to lose. And I got one pound a week. There are 52 weeks in a year. Um, 
So I have to go on this diet for two years to get down to my body weight. Nah, fuck that shit. I'm even starting. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to find a way that will take the motivation that you have at the beginning of the diet, the not being hungry you have at the beginning of the diet, okay, and use that to lose a lot of weight in the beginning. If you lose a lot of weight in the beginning, you're going to be motivated. You're gonna be like, yeah, you know, it sucks. I'm not hanging out eating pizza and drinking beer all day, but damn, you know, I'm losing weight quickly. You know, like these clothes don't fit at all and it's only been a few weeks because you're losing weight quickly, okay? Now, how do you do this? Okay, let's say you go ahead and you start off in a massive caloric surplus, uh, deficit. A massive caloric deficit, which means you cut calories extremely in the beginning of the diet instead of at the end of the diet. So this means in the beginning, when you're motivated, you're like, yeah, I'm gonna buy my running shoes, I'm gonna buy my workout clothes, and I'm gonna throw away all my beer and all my soda and all my pizza and all my ice cream, and I'm gonna buy just healthy food, and buy Tupperware, and I'm gonna change my life, and everything's gonna be good. And you got this motivation, you go on a massive caloric deficit. You cut your calories extremely, okay? You start losing weight, and you're like, damn, look at me, I'm already losing like lots of weight. This is awesome, okay? Because you've done that, you're getting the motivation to continue on with the diet, okay? You go a couple weeks in and it's not like, wow, it's three weeks in and I've lost two pounds. You're like, oh, it's three weeks in and I've lost like, you know, eight pounds, okay? You know, everything's going great here. You know, I'm already lost a lot of weight. This is awesome, okay? Another thing is, in the beginning of a diet, you're not going to be that hungry, even if you cut your calories extremely, okay? But you are not going to be able to stay on this diet, which is actually a good thing. I'm going to explain that later. But right now, you cannot stay on this extreme of a diet for very long, okay? The fatter you are, the more fat you have to lose, the easier it is going to be to stay on this diet, okay? But no matter how lean or how fat you are, you are at some point depending upon the person, going to have to increase the calories, okay? And that's not a bad thing. Let's say you, you cut calories extremely, and then you increase your calories by, let's say, goal body weight. The guy weighs 300 pounds. He wants to get down to 200 pounds. His goal body weight is 200 pounds, okay? Great. Increase for a 200-pound goal body weight, 200 calories a day, okay? You go ahead now, you're, instead of being at, like, let's say, a 1,000-calorie diet, you're, like, at an 800-calorie diet. That's still okay, a massive caloric deficit, okay? It's still a massive caloric deficit. Instead of being 1,000 calories under maintenance, now you're 800, but that's still a lot. But by adding in those 200 calories, and I do it through fat, by increasing fat, which increases satiety, okay? It satiates your hunger, it makes you less hungry, gives you more energy, then you can stay on this diet longer, okay? What you do after a while, hey, guess what? you know you can't stay on this diet anymore, 800 calorie deficit. I mean, I'm making these numbers up, but you get the idea. Basically, you start at a huge caloric deficit, decrease decrease the deficit a little bit. You can continue cruising along, fucking, you know, choo-chooing along at this little deficit. Then you go ahead and you increase the de uh, decrease the deficit again. You add in some more calories. So basically, instead of starting off slow, and then as you feel like shit, you cut your calories more and more, you start off huge, with a huge caloric deficit and you cut fewer and fewer calories as you go along. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to allow you to stay on the diet longer. This is going to allow you to have more energy on the diet. This is going to allow you to have more motivation, to feel better, to lose more fat in the beginning as opposed to the end of the diet. And what's also happening by decreasing the caloric deficit as you go along, what's going to happen is by the end of the diet, by the end of the diet when you're at your goal body weight, you are going to be basically at maintenance calories, okay? You know, if you basically, you're like, okay, I'm starving, increase calories. I'm starving, increase calories. I'm starving, increase calories. I'm starving, increase calories. At some point, you are going to not be starving anymore. You're going to be feeling good. The body weight that you're at, you are going to be at maintenance calories to maintain that level of leanness, to give you the energy you need, to make you feel good, okay? But you are also going to not gain weight. You're not going to be over your calories. So, First of all, the one problem, motivation, huge caloric deficit in the beginning, huge weight loss in the beginning, keeps you motivated, keeps you going, okay? You know, being hungry in the beginning of a diet, even with a huge caloric uh, deficit, you're not going to be starving, you're going to be okay. Add calories as you go along, okay? So you're still in a caloric deficit, but you're just short of like being so hungry you can't stay on the diet. And by increasing the calories, you are going to be at maintenance at the end of the diet. It's basically like a reverse diet 
that at the end of the diet, you're already at your maintenance calories. You just keep eating what you're eating now, okay? How are you feeling? Good. Are you hungry? Yeah, you know, a little bit sometimes, but nothing really bad. Are you maintaining your weight? Yes, I'm maintaining your weight. Do you feel good? Energy levels, mood's good? Yeah, I'm fine. This is good calories for me. Stay there. <laughs> Don't change anything, okay? Stay where you're at, okay? So this has solved all three problems, okay? Uh, this is the base of what I teach in the Low Carb Cutting and Bulking Program. You know, get your body fat adapted, get your body off your, over your carb addiction, get your electrolytes, your water, you know, your intake, your fiber intake, your fat, your protein, everything right. Then go on an extreme diet. Okay. And as you go, you basically, there are different ways to do this. If you have more fat to lose, you might do fat cycle where you have high calorie, low calorie days, you might do diet breaks. But the bottom line is when you end the diet, you slowly increase your calories. So at the end of the diet, you are already at maintenance. You don't have to worry about reverse dieting or anything because you did it during the diet, okay? And this will, like I said, this will allow you to get to your goal. This will also allow you to maintain your goal when the diet's over. Appreciate you guys watching the video. If you want to learn exactly how to do this, check out Low Carb Cutting and Bulking at lowcarbcuttingandbulking.com or just look in the description below and see all the links to all of my programs. Aside from that, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. Click the bell icon so you see all the videos that I upload. And I appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next video.